Hi, my name is Andreas Meyer, and today I want to show you a couple of tips how to make good lecture videos. And I thought, well, what is the best way how to actually convey this information? And I think I'll just show you all the mistakes that I did in the past couple of months. Welcome everybody. Welcome back to Deep Learning. Now, what I actually want to show in this video is essentially my learnings over the last couple of months, how I started doing videos, and then how I could gradually improve them, as you've seen in the couple of shots that I just shown. So, the first thing when I started is I started just with a webcam like this one and went ahead, connected it to my to my laptop PC, yeah, and thought, okay, that's gonna be cool, and I'm gonna do a couple of recordings with this. Now you will see that this camera doesn't have a very good image quality. Welcome everybody to this semester's deep learning lecture. Sound-wise, I actually went to a couple of colleagues that do audio and speech processing, and I already started with label microphones and an USB audio device that kind of helped me to get a kind of okayish sound quality, but you see that this LAPO microphones, they kind of have a not so great audio quality. Still, it's better what your internal microphone will do and probably what the microphone of a webcam will do because they are actually quite far away from the speaker and this then means that they don't have a such good sound quality. You say, today I'm using a very different microphone which has a much better sound quality. So then I started, well, the recording I did with OBS Studio and to be honest, I'm still using OBS Studio for this video because this is really a great open source software package where you can then record and mix streams on the fly. You can switch different scenes and so on. So it's a really useful tool that is obviously also used by many YouTubers. So I can definitely recommend this. Now let's look into the problems that I had with my first setup and uh, you can see that because I'm using the laptop the audio and the video is not always synchronized so I had to edit quite a bit in order to adjust the sound towards the video otherwise the speech is just not lip synchronous. So this is quite a bit of a hassle. Also the recording was mono because I just had one microphone and the USB audio device would just put it onto one channel, which then meant that I had to recode the video and essentially merge both channels into a single one in order to use both speakers of a stereo setup. Also the video is kind of blurred so it's just not a very great image quality and generally you have this very dark image impression. Welcome everybody to this semester's deep learning lecture. As you can see I'm not in the lecture hall as many as of you. I am in my home office and we have to work from home in order to stop the current pandemic. So after a couple of videos I thought let's go ahead and improve this a bit and what I actually did is I got a new camera. So I got this Logitech Brio camera and I bought it after I have seen a couple of reviews and it was really advertised as a very good webcam with considerable good image quality. It's actually a pro device, so you really have to know what you're doing if you're buying this camera. You can adjust it very finely with the drivers that come with it, so it's, it's not a bad camera. But if you just put it on your laptop and start recording, you get stuff like this. Welcome back to Deep Learning. Now you see that there's a problem with the image quality and the reason is it's simply too dark. So you need quite a bit of light if you want to use a Brio camera. If you want to use it in front of a bookshelf like I'm doing it, then it's not ideal without any additional hardware. And this is the reason why I then went ahead and bought two studio lights. So these are LED lights with uh, 40 watts. And you can see when you use them, then you get much better images with the Brio. Welcome back to Deep Learning. Now you see this setup is now essentially the Logitech Brio webcam. We have still the audio with the Eddie Roll USB audio capture, UA25 and the Audio Technical AT. 
831B microphones. Again, I'm recording with OBS Studio and you see the image quality is already improved. If you don't apply additional lighting, you get this extreme blur. So the Brio will compensate missing light with blurring in order to get down with the noise. So this is kind of a good feature if you don't know how to operate it. So you really need a good light. Still, I'm using the same audio setup, so the sound is still mono. And what you also have to keep in mind is that if you use a label microphone, you want to attach it here or here. So the farther you go away from your mouth, the less low the audio quality will be. So at some point I try to put it up very close, like here, and then the microphone connects to your neck and what then happens is that you hear all the vibrations from your vocal folds on the microphone. So this is an absolute disaster audio quality wise and I have an example for this one here. Welcome back to Deep Learning and you can see I have a couple of upgrades. Now you see that I really needed some additional improvements. In particular, I still had the problem that using the laptop, the audio was never in sync with the actual video and you know I'm collecting several HD streams because I collect the slides, I collect my own video and then I started connecting various cameras and so on. So I decided to buy a new computer. And this is actually also the computer that I'm using right now. This is a new iMac and I'm using the integrated camera and it's actually doing a fairly good job in collecting videos. Still, I'm using the studio lights in order to get a good lighting condition. So this is really nice. Welcome back to Deep Learning. So today we want to discuss a little bit about the so-called Markov decision process. And then I experimented with OBS Studio. So I was using a second scene where I was still using the Brio. So in the main scene, you could use the good image quality with the iMac and on the slide scene, where I'm essentially switching over to the other position, I was using the Brio webcam now. So you see that in the main scene, the image quality is good. In the second scene, the image quality is not that great, but I kind of still could go on with this. Again, the newer Model NL660 LED lights with 40 watts and uh, diffuser plate were really helpful here. And in order to switch the scenes online, I'm using a Stream Deck. So this is this guy here. So I'm still using this because it's super nice because you can essentially switch the scenes as you go during the recording. And you can, for example, do stuff like switch to one camera, switch to the other camera, switch to it and switch back. And this way you can do very interactive recordings. Audio-wise, still the same thing, the Edirol USB audio capture and the audio technical microphones and a two-scene setup. So this was, I think, quite a bit an improvement over the last couple of recordings. But still, a huge problem is that the colors of the two cameras are not adjusted. And this then means that you will have a different image impression when you record with one camera and the other camera. And with the Brio, it was essentially impossible to match the same color characteristics than in the iMac camera. Welcome back to Deep Learning. Today, we want to continue talking about our common practices. So for these reasons, I went on to a new setup. And this is essentially the setup that I'm using here today. So this is the iMac camera. And then I did a couple of upgrades for the second camera. So I'm using a Camlink HDMI interface. And with this HDMI interface, I'm able to connect a regular camera. So this is a Sony RX100 MK2 camera that I'm actually using for the second recording. So for the second scene, and it is attached to a teleprompter, a guy like this one here. And the nice thing with this is that you can essentially use your mobile phone to read off the teleprompter and at the same time, also do a very nice recording of yourself while you're actually looking into the camera. So this is a very nice feature. And then I finally solved the audio problem and I got a proper microphone. It's the guy that you see here. So this is the NT-USB from Rode, which does a very nice audio quality. And I'm also still using the Stream Deck interface here. So also a very nice thing.
So this is then essentially the, the, I mean, the Stream Deck you don't need, it's a gimmick. But the other things are very nice and I can show you now. So this is the view through the teleprompter. So we could read off this one in order to have a real good recording of a longer piece of text where you want to be exact in the formulation. Now I'm not using this kind of teleprompter and then I'm just talking very freely. So this is also pretty cool. Uh, I can tell you that I have a couple of troubles with this one as well. So it was really hard to configure the Sony camera with the iMac, but you see now that the colors more or less match now. They are not so far off, so I think this is okay. And the preparation of the teleprompter was quite a challenge because with the Sony camera, it didn't match any of the converters that are shipped. So I actually had to build something myself. And, you know, for a good scene, you probably have to use duct tape anyway. So this is how the teleprompter then looks in detail. Let's take the example of fraud detection. Out of 10,000 transactions, 9,999 are genuine and only one is fraudulent. Well, I have a couple of honorable mentions that I'm not using every time, but that I started to use, for example, for the new lecture pattern recognition. And there I'm also using a green screen. So a green screen is actually a pretty fancy device. So you can see that there is very nice ones from Elgato, for example. This you can put in the back of your scene, you can fold it down and only where you use it, you actually pop it up and it's only a couple of moves that are required in order to set up the green screen. So this is pretty cool. And if you use it, you can then produce scenes like this one. Welcome everybody. My name is Andreas Meyer and I am teaching this semester pattern recognition at Friedrich Alexander University Erlangen Nuremberg. So pattern recognition in Erlangen has actually quite some history. What I'm also found extremely useful, not so much for the videos, but for the individual Zoom calls and so on that you're doing is a document camera. So my PC is also connected to a document camera and this one is also unfoldable. So you can use one or two moves and then you have the document camera ready and you can just write on a piece of paper and explain stuff. And I think I might want to use this in some of the future lectures as well. So I'm definitely thinking about using this kind of hardware. Something that I experimented with, but I never got to working really well is the iPad with iPencil. So I already had trouble live streaming the image from the iPad to the iMac that never worked really properly. And I was also experimenting with Sidecar, but it turned out that Sidecar is also not that great because it kind of also has a delayed output and then you get into trouble again with synchronous audio and video. So I found, for example, this Rode USB and T microphone much better because you just plug it up on USB and it connects well, it's easy to configure and it makes a decent sound if you place it rather close to your mouth. So that's pretty good. So yeah, that's already it. This is my entire setup and you can see it's actually not that intrusive. So you kind of still can have a regular workplace and use it and you don't need to set up a full studio. So the individual elements kind of integrate with a, a normal desk environment or a normal desktop environment. Still, you are able this way to do kind of okayish videos that I think are probably in a shape that I can really share it with you for different lectures or also for vlogs like this one. So thank you very much for listening. And if you like this video, if you're interested in the lecture video, I can definitely recommend to follow my YouTube channel. There's also this small bell that is kind of a good reminder that whenever I upload a new video, you will be notified. But you can also follow me on Twitter or LinkedIn. There I will also advertise new videos as soon as they appear. So thank you very much for watching this video and hoping to seeing you soon in the next one. Bye bye. Welcome everybody to this semester's deep learning lecture. Welcome back to deep learning. 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 Welcome back to deep learning.